CR 21-388, this is State of Nebraska versus Dolezal. We are set for sentencing today. This is former Nebraska State Patrol Trooper Brandon Dolezal in court for his latest sentencing. He served his position from June of 2020 until he was terminated in March of 2021 before his arrest after an internal investigation. You can see he's wearing an orange jumpsuit in court here. That's because he's coming straight from Douglas County, where he's facing previous charges of first-degree sexual assault of a child. The Douglas County affidavit made shocking revelations about an incident that occurred at Scutt Catholic High School on November 1st, 2021. According to the affidavit, the Omaha police were summoned to the school to investigate a report of a missing girl. Upon arrival, officers were informed that a 15-year-old girl had left the premises with a man in a pickup truck, who was later identified as Dolezal. When the pickup truck returned to the school's parking lot, a school administrator intervened and prevented Dolezal from leaving until the police could arrive. The initial information given to the police indicated that Dolezal claimed to be an 18-year-old senior at Millard West High School. During the investigation, the girl revealed that Dolezal had sexually assaulted her while they were in the pickup truck. Shockingly, she also disclosed that they had been communicating via Snapchat, and Dolezal knew she was only 15 years old. Dolezal's statement to the police corroborated the fact that he had picked up the girl from Scott High School and had been communicating with her on Snapchat. The incident left the community outraged and the details surrounding the case were equally disturbing. So there's a sentence and judgment of the court that you be in prison in an institution of the Nebraska Department of Correctional Services on count one to an indeterminate term of not less than 10 years, not more than 12 years. You are given credit for the three days already served. Count, I think it's three. It's also the, the enticement count, not less than 10 years, not more than 12 years. Count five, which is a child pornography, not less than five years, not more than eight years. Count nine, also the child pornography, not less than five years, not less, not more than eight years. Count 12, not less than five years, not more than eight years. And the last count, not less than five years, not more than eight years. All sentences are ordered to be run, ordered served to be run consecutively. This sentence will also run consecutively to the sentence given in Sarbanes County. You also, you're also ordered to comply with the Nebraska Sex Offender Registration Act. He's given a bad reputation to Nebraska's law enforcers. And we're left wondering how many bad eggs are still out there. Four charges and the complaint the state's filed against you and the possible penalties that could apply. Yes. This is 51-year-old former Hutchinson police officer Todd W. Allen. Having 21 years of experience in the forces, he felt as though he could use his position of power to prey on vulnerable women for years. Court records show that he targeted females, many of whom were in cars with a boyfriend, friend, or sibling. Mr. Allen would approach the cars and tap on a window, sometimes shining a flashlight inside the vehicle. He would then ask the victim to step out of the car, often identifying himself as Park Security and then proceed to assault the victims while questioning them about drugs. During the assaults, Mr. Allen would cover his face with a black ski mask, then flee after the victims yelled for help. Numerous complaints about prowling and window peeping eventually led to Mr. Allen's arrest. Court documents state that he was caught on camera peering over a fence at a group of women who were having a party on June 19th, 2022. When Mr. Allen spotted the camera, he shined a flashlight at it and then ran away. The authorities were then able to use the description and video to stop him at an intersection in Hutchinson while he was riding his bike. About two months later, Mr. Allen voluntarily met with detectives and admitted that he looked over the fence at the women, and later admitted to being responsible for the sexual assaults that had occurred earlier. The authorities discovered that Mr. Allen, while still a police officer, had searched the police department's database multiple times to view details about the sexual assaults. Eventually, according to court records, now quoting, the defendant admitted that he was suspect in the cases he had reviewed and that he was the park prowler posing as a park security officer or police officer the department had been searching for in these cases. 
Mr. Allen's attacks were a dark secret that the Hutchinson Police Department had kept hidden for years. The department had never publicly mentioned the assaults until the newly appointed police chief, Jeff Hooper, held a news conference on November 6, 2018 to, quote, alert the public to potential dangers and precautions they could take. I am appalled and disgusted that somebody who is a suspect in these type of crimes and this type of behavior ever wore the uniform and this badge that I am honored to pin on my chest every day. After leaving the police department in January of 2019, Mr. Allen worked as a security officer at Hutchinson Regional Medical Center until his arrest. If convicted, Mr. Allen faces up to 27 and a half years in prison. Articles relating to the offences in St. Albans. In 2020, this, this is the allegation that's been made to us, okay, sir? There's no necessity. Yes, there is. I've been a police officer 20 years. Right. David, do you want me to come naked like this? No, just understand you're under arrest, okay? I'm under just arrest. explain to us what do you need. I'll pull it like this. Don't right. Worry about it. Can, can one of my colleagues go and get you stuff? Yeah. Okay. This is a man who's joined the ranks of Britain's worst serial sex offenders. This is David Carrick, a former officer of Britain's most elite armed police unit. After that, he joined the Metropolitan Police in 2001. In 2009, he was selected for the Armed Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Team, giving him even more power and influence. But it was this same power that helped him evade a trail of victims. In 2000, a former partner accused him of burglary and sending abusive messages, yet no action was taken. Fast forward to 2019, a neighbor reports seeing him grabbing a woman by the neck, but still the authorities turn a blind eye. But it doesn't stop there. In 2016, he was even suspected of stalking, but nothing came of it. Then, in 2021, a victim bravely came forward with rape allegations against him, leading to his arrest. However, the victim later withdrew the allegations, allowing Carrick to continue his reign of terror unchecked. The Met Police and other authorities were fully aware of Carrick's behavior for years, but they did nothing to stop him. The victims were ignored and dismissed, leaving them to suffer in silence. It wasn't until his arrest in 2021 that justice was finally served. He was even nicknamed Bastard Dave by his co-workers for his cruelty. Carrick used his position as an armed police officer to abuse and rape numerous women he met through dating apps like Badu and Tinder. He manipulated his victims, controlling every aspect of their lives, including what they ate, what they wore, and where they slept. He would sometimes lock them up in small spaces, urinate on them, and physically assault them with belts. His victims were left degraded and traumatized. It wasn't until October of 2021 that one of Carrick's victims came forward, emboldened by the Sarah Everard case. Carrick was arrested and suspended from duty. Okay. Well, I'll allow you to get, get some clothes. What is it you're searching for? Articles for relating to the offences. In St Albans. In 2020. This, this is the allegation that's been made to us, okay, sir? There's no necessity. Yes, there is. So I've been a police officer for 20 years. Right. David. Do you want me to come naked like this? No. Just understand you're under arrest, okay? I'm under just arrest. explain to us what do you need. I'll pull it like this. Don't right. Worry about it. Can, can one of my colleagues go and get you stuff? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. He initially pled not guilty to all charges, but in December of 2022, he finally pled guilty to 49 charges, including 24 counts of rape. Your offending was over 17 years and encompassed 12 victims. Moreover, the singular element which elevates your offending as a brutal serial rapist into that company is the principal aggravating feature of the explicit or implicit use of your occupation to entice, reassure, or intimidate your victim. Carrick faces sentencing later in 2023. It is possible that he will be in prison for up to 60 years. Carrick's story is a testament to the perils of absolute power. All it took was one brave victim to complain, and after nine questionable escapes, he was finally brought to justice. 
This also brings up so many questions about why the authorities bent to his will and put his seniority and elitism on top of his criminal acts. But that is the unfortunate case with rapist cops. They go about their duties plain as day, using their social media and whatnot, but only after the damage is done and complaints are filed that these monsters are exposed and brought to justice. We'd tell you to stay safe, but after seeing these enforcers of justice becoming endorsers of child violence, we don't know what's safe anymore. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.